Hey, what's going on everybody? Marvin here. Welcome back to another video. So if you watched my last video, I went over the recent update regarding Keepa, that it is now a paid service. So now that you have subscribed to Keepa, I want to show you exactly how to use it to minimize your risk as much as possible to make sure you're making good buying decisions. And I'm going to show you how I evaluate a product to determine if it's a winner or if it's a loser. So before we get into the Keepa graph, I'm going to give you a very, very brief rundown of what we're looking at. So this is the Blue Camouflage PlayStation 4 controller. This is the buy box, if you do not know. This section over here on the right. This is the buy box price. And this is the seller that is currently holding the buy box, which is Amazon.com. Ships from and sold by Amazon.com. There are approximately 46 competitors, used and new. It's not really 46 because there's also FBM sellers, which are fulfilled by merchant. And there's also some that are used. And we only sell new. Or at least I only sell new. All right. This is the Keepa graph. If you don't have anything preset, it might look like this when you first open it up. And this can be very, very overwhelming. You're going to shut everything off except for four of the buttons. So I only leave on Amazon, new, sales rank, and buy box. Now let's start with Amazon. So let me show you what we're looking at. Anything that is orange like this, big orange filled areas, that is Amazon on the listing. Typically we stay away from Amazon, but there are times that you can compete with Amazon. In this particular case, it looks like Amazon does not share the buy box. Everywhere they're at, they're always chasing the third party sellers and they control the buy box. Most recently here, they're just chasing the third party sellers. The third party sellers are able to get the buy box a few times, but just be aware the majority of the time Amazon is not sharing the buy box in this listing. If you want to know more in depth details as far as competing against Amazon on a listing and when you should and when you shouldn't, then just go back and watch that video I just made. I will link it on the screen here, but I'm not going to get super in depth with that because I already did a video on it. We're just trying to read Keepa. All right, so that's Amazon. Now, new is the blue line and it's just showing you in new condition what is this product selling for and you can see that it's going up and down up and down sales rank is probably the most important and it's the green line and it is showing you the sales velocity of the product now each product in each category has different sales rank so a sales rank for one category is not going to be the same sales rank for another category. For example, a sales rank of 5,000 in the toys and games category is a pretty good sales rank. It means selling a lot of volume. But let's take the same sales rank of 5,000 in the video game category, and it is not selling nearly as many units as the toys and games category. Okay, so keep that in mind. And I'm going to show you how to calculate all this at the end. So the next one is the buy box and they are the pink diamonds here and we want to know who is controlling the buy box, who has the buy box. As we can see Amazon back here, they had it. And if we can see over here, the third parties have it. They're the pink diamonds. And then down here, if you don't have this bottom area, your graph will most likely look like this. You just click on more historical data and it'll pop it up. And I only have the new offer, which means that it is only showing you the FBA sellers that are selling this product in new condition, which is what we care about. One thing you will notice is that the more sellers that are on a listing, the lower the price will go. So as we can see here where the sellers peaked out, the sales rank did dip a little bit from this higher area, which was $49.99 down to $46.96. And then it went down a little bit and the price went back up to that 56 mark, okay? Now, over here is the length of time that you wanna go back. A day, a week, a month, three months. Usually it'll say a year or it'll say all. This particular product hasn't been around for a year. It's only been around for 168 days, so that is what we have to go off of. But I always like to go back at least a year to get the most data that I can. Farther than a year, I really don't care about just because the markets change. So I only go back a year, and uh, if I can't, then I just make do with what I have, so, like in this situation. So let's say we are evaluating this product to see if it's a winner or a loser. We can see that Amazon is heavily controlling the buy box, and all the third-party sellers are trying to undercut, most likely to just sell out, the, sell out of the units that they have. 
Now they will go out of stock, but we don't know when that is, and they can come back to stock whenever they want. And for the majority of this listing, they've been in stock. So automatically, I would probably not buy this product. So let me show you a different Keeper graph. So this is the Wilson Performance Racket, and it's just a cover. And we can see what the buy box is and who has the buy box. We're going to come down here and look at the Keeper graph. Now, Amazon's not on this listing, hasn't been on this listing because it doesn't even allow Amazon to show up right here. So we're going to go back a year and we want to look at the sales rank and we want to look at the price history. So another thing that I didn't mention with the last graph was down here, it'll show you the dates. It'll show you May, July, September, November. It'll go back a year. And if you hover over a certain area, at the bottom, you can see that the dates are moving. June 7th, June 15th. On the left side over here, it'll show you the price. And on the right side, it'll show you the sales rank. Now, if you want to know what category this product falls under, you're going to want to scroll down. Down to the product details, or sometimes it's called the product information area. And we only care about the parent category, which in this situation, it's sports and outdoors. We don't care that it's number three in sports and outdoors, sports fitness, team sports. These are all subcategories. We don't care about that. We care about the sales rank in the parent category only. Okay, so now we know it's in sports and outdoors. It is currently at the sales rank of 18,000, but let's look at the history. So we're back up here, and this is a very steady product as far as price history. 1834 for a long, long time. It only went up and it never went back down. So let's say we're getting this product for $7. This would most likely be a winning product because this price history is incredibly steady. Now, as far as the sales rank goes, it's going up and down. And we can see that it peaked out at around 40 something thousand up here at the peak. But usually it stays around the 20,000 mark, I would say especially for the last couple of months, even with quarter four. So what we would do now is let's say we're interested in this product. As far as I've seen, Amazon's on the listing. The price history is incredible. And we just want to know how many units it's going to sell. So we go to junglescout.com slash estimator. This is a completely free website to use. You do not need to log in. You do not need to sign up. It's completely free. And that's junglescout.com slash estimator. And you're going to choose your marketplace. I'm in the U.S. And we're looking into the sports and outdoors category. Click on sports and outdoors. And we want to know the sales velocity. So like I said, I think it stays around the 20,000. And it sells 150 units a month. You can also go down here to statistic. And it will show you in the green column the highest sales rank that it's ever been for the life of the product. Which if the product's been around for five years, don't pay too much attention to it. The lowest sales rank, the current sales rank and the average sales rank for the last 90 days and the last 180 days. So it goes back as far as six months with the sales rank. Now it'll also tell you how many units it sells per month, but don't go off of this because it's not as accurate as the Jungle Scout estimator. So like I said, I think it hovered over 20,000. And if we look at this, the last six months, the average was 18,000. But I like to round up just to be safe. So with the 20,000 sales rank, it'll sell 150 units. So we are not going to get all of the sales, of course, because we have competitors. So we want to go down here where it says other sellers on Amazon. We're going to click on new five from 1795. Now down here, we're going to click that it is a new condition and we are only worried about prime sellers. We don't care about the other sellers regardless of how many there are. We only care about prime sellers because that's what we are. Now we can see that there are a total of five competitors, but there are actually only two people and they're just on the listing multiple times. And there's only four people at the price that we're gonna sell it at because we're gonna match the buy box. We're not just gonna be dropping the price to get all the sales. Do not do that. People that drop the price make less money for a product that we could all be making more money with if they would just match the buy box. But people get greedy and they wanna get all the sales or they panic sell and they see the price going down so they start dropping it to recoup their money. So let's say we're gonna jump in on this product 
and there are four competitors. So we go back to our estimator, and there are four competitors plus us, which would be an additional seller splitting the buy box because the buy box is going to be rotating. So there's five people going to be splitting the 150 in sales, which would add up to 30 sales a month, which is pretty low in my opinion. So I probably wouldn't go for this product unless the profit was worth it for selling only 30 units a month. But if the profit was only a couple of dollars, 30 units a month, it just wouldn't make sense. But now you can see how we came to that conclusion. We went to the Keepa graph and made sure Amazon was on the listing. We wanted to know the history for the last year. And we wanted to know the sales rank for the last year as well. And then obviously you can't just go off of the Jungle Scout numbers because we have competitors. And then in this particular Keepa graph, there is no low point like there was on the DualShock 4 which the low point over here is $38.99. And you always want to look at what is the low points and what are the high points because you want to know if I buy this product and if it goes back down to the lowest point it's been, which is $38.99, am I okay there? Am I breaking even? Am I making profit? Or am I taking a loss? You want to know so that you can be prepared. You don't want to go unprepared into anything regarding your business because that's all capital that you need to be turning over. So if it does go back down to $38.99 and let's say you're at the break-even point, are you okay with holding on so that the price will come back up? That is very, very important to consider because don't just go off of the inflated price up here, which is $51.95, and completely ignore the fact that a few months ago it was at $38.99. Okay, very, very important to know the low points, know the high points, and know the averages. All right? So that is how you read Keepa to minimize your risk as much as possible and how you determine if a product is a winner or a loser. Now, if you need help finding suppliers so that you can also get products just like these, like the DualShock 4, then watch the video on the screen, which will show you how to find suppliers depending on what products you're looking for. All right, I will see you guys in that next video.